In so many ways, Henry Ford was a simple man. He liked to go camping with his friends. That's Thomas Edison behind him. He enjoyed old-time country dancing. Here he is with Burroughs, the naturalist. Skating with his grandchildren. They plant a garden together, Henry Ford II and Benson. His first car, he called it a quadricycle. That's his wife, Clara. He began with an idea that most people thought wouldn't work, but he made it work. And the tools he used were common sense, ingenuity, and perseverance. Along with a natural instinct for knowing how to put machines together and make them run. He was born into a world of limited horizons. And though he left the farm that might have been his heritage, he never lost his love for the land and the everlasting cycle of seed time and harvest. What he accomplished helped men put the burden of work on machines and broke the barriers of space and time, of isolation and distance. His life was a paradox. While his mechanical genius helped to change forever the lives of people everywhere, he sought to preserve in some permanent form a record of the world around him and his ever-widening interest in it. He collected buildings the way others collect stamps and put them in a village where time stands still. He assembled acres of machines and put them under cover in a vast historical museum. And early, he discovered the astonishing capacity of the motion picture camera to document for all time whatever it saw when the crank was turned. In April 1914, at his Highland Park plant, he organized a motion picture department which through the years produced films that were shown in theaters and schools throughout the country. Travelogues, newsreels, and documentaries that touched on nearly every facet of American life. the country looks in the years before the First World War. Rich, rolling, but often inaccessible. The man on the farm works as his forefathers have. It's a hard life for man and beast. for the farmer's wife, too. Many a quiet evening at home, because there's no place to go and no light to read by. A man thinks twice before he goes to market on roads like this. Sometimes, he never even gets there. It's a long walk to school on a muddy road. More fun to go by sleigh in the winter. 
During recess, there's time for a snowball fight. Of a climb up the old elm tree, if you've got the spunk for daring deeds like this. The one sure way to get someplace is on a train. But you can only go where the tracks go. Life in the city moves at a slow pace. This is Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington. No trip to the Capitol is complete without a tour of the White House. President Wilson lives here now. The East Room with its chandeliers and shiny floors. There's more hustle and bustle down at the market. Faneuil Hall in Boston or in New York City on the Lower East Side. Always plenty to do and see in the big town. Ride the elevated train all the way from the Battery far uptown. There's the Hippodrome, one of the big theaters in New York. Another way to see the city is a boat ride around Manhattan Island. All aboard. Watch out. Some city slicker may try to sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. We're passing the Battery with its famous aquarium. There's a Navy cruiser at anchor. Great ocean liners along the Hudson River. Mighty tall buildings in New York City. The Flatiron Building, shaped like a triangle. And the Woolworth Building, 60 stories high, tallest in the world. Look at that traffic on Fifth Avenue. Kind of peaceful over on Riverside Drive. Grant's tomb, always one of the favorite sights to see. Sunday in Central Park. There's no place like it for a leisurely stroll or a boat ride on the lagoon. even get wet if the water's warm enough. And where do we go on vacation once a year? Atlantic City, of course. No, that's not a real elephant. It's a hotel at the end of the boardwalk. Look, they're waving out the elephant's eye the Atlantic Ocean, and a few hardy acrobats. Most of the time, we'll stroll along the boardwalk or ride along in the rolling chairs.
every city has a pretty park. This is Belle Isle near Detroit, with lagoons for a quiet afternoon ride in a canoe, if you don't mind the crowds. Some like to dance, while others gather around the piano to listen. In the winter, the adventurous go ice skating. It's easy if you know how. For the really daring, there's nothing like the thrill of an ice boat on a clear, cold day. Or the fast track on a toboggan slide. And there's plenty of speed at an auto race, once they get going. Buffalo Bill himself, William F. Cody in his 71st year and straight as an arrow. It's 1916 and he's out on tour with his circus again. Indian war dances and bucking broncos. Opening of baseball season and time to throw out the first ball. Snapshots of other people we know. John Burroughs, the naturalist, waves to admirers. Luther Burbank, an expert in horticulture. In his experiments, he's removed the spines from the cactus. Says it's good to eat, too. We'll take his word for it. Thomas Edison in San Francisco in 1915. He's out for a drive with his wife and Mr. and Mrs. Harvey Firestone. Joseph G. Cannon of Illinois, former Speaker of the House of Representatives. Will Rogers. America's favorite humorist. Out west, a few hardy souls visit Glacier National Park. They go for a climb. A little short on equipment, but strong in spirit. view is worth the effort, so they say. Uh-oh, there goes Dad. It's not all play. There's still work to be done and no limit, it seems, to our natural resources. cameraman can't resist his little joke. You see a lot of women in the factories now. These girls are making footballs. And these are making hats. There is a difference. Down at the post office, they're teaching the girls to sort the mail. One thing they learn in a hurry, don't pick up too many at once. Too bad. Here's a clean place for women to work, and steady, too. Some men change their collars twice a week. Machines do more and more of the hard work these days. For instance, here's the way they assemble the spokes and make the wheels for the Model T Ford in Highland Park, Michigan.
The eight-hour workday ends and the men go home, mostly by trolley. Not many can afford to buy a car of their own yet. These men went home long ago, when the war between the states ended. But the hardy survivors, both blue and gray, still meet together once a year to renew old acquaintance. It's 1917, and they're camped at Vicksburg, Mississippi. What memories they must have. They have fought their war. While these raw recruits at Camp Custer in Michigan are being trained to fight another war. The call goes out and youth responds enthusiastically. ahead. Just a year ago, we re-elected Woodrow Wilson as president. Now we're in a war we hope to avoid, but we're confident he'll lead us to victory. The mood of the nation changes. We talk about liberty loans and liberty cabbage. In so many ways, Henry Ford was a simple man. He liked to go camping with his friends. That's Thomas Edison behind him. He enjoyed old-time country dancing. Here he is with Burroughs, the naturalist. skating with his grandchildren. They plant a garden together, Henry Ford II and Benson. His first car, Diamond Harvest. What he accomplished helped men put the burden of work on machines and broke the barriers of space and time, of isolation and distance. His life was a paradox. While his mechanical genius helped to change forever the lives of people everywhere, he sought to preserve in some permanent form a record of the world around him and his ever-widening interest in it. He collected buildings the way others collect stamps and put them in a... He called it a quadricycle. That's his wife, Clara. He began with an idea that most people thought wouldn't work, but he made it work. And the tools he used were common sense, ingenuity, and perseverance, along with a natural instinct for knowing how to put machines together and make them run. He was born into a world of limited horizons, and though he left the farm that might have been his heritage, he never lost his love for the land and the everlasting cycle of sea time travelogues, newsreels, and documentaries that touched on nearly every facet of American life. where time stands still. He assembled acres of machines and put them under cover in a vast historical museum. And early, he discovered the astonishing capacity of the motion picture camera to document for all time whatever it saw when the crank was turned. In April 1914, at his Highland Park plant, he organized a motion picture department which through the years produced films that were shown in theaters and schools throughout the country. 